God bless you, Transformation Church. God bless you guys. We are so happy that you have came into the house of the Lord this morning and that you've joined us either live stream or here present with us. We are so blessed to be able to gather again and to be able to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. 
So we're just going to stand to our feet. And we're going to pray. We're going to start this service. Amen. So, Father God, we humbly come before you, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and allowing us to come into your house of worship. Father God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit just hovers in this place this morning. Father God, that your Holy Spirit would just abide in the midst of the worship and in the word, Father God. That anybody have come with a heavy burden, Father God, that they will lay it down at your feet. Father God, for this is the moment, Father God, that we were created, Father, to lift up a worship, Father God, unto your nostrils, a sweet fragrance unto you, Father God. So I just pray that you just have your way, Father God, and bring those who are on their way, Father God, safely, Father God, so they can be able to join us this morning. We love you, Lord. We just love you, Jesus, for you are worthy of it all, my God. You are worthy, Jesus. This morning, I just really want you to focus on worshiping God, not for your certain, you know, your certain circumstance, not your current circumstance, but for who he is. Amen. Sometimes we get caught up in worshiping God for when we're at a good point in our lives or when everything is going well. This morning, I really, truly want you to focus on who God is because honestly 2020 wasn't hasn't been that good amen but we just need to focus and really worship God for the beauty of his majesty for him and his grace for his mercy that endures forever for being the king of kings and the lord of lords for being jehovah jireh our provider for always being there for being the one who gave us breath this morning for all those things, because he is the one who is worthy. Amen. So you're worthy, Jesus. We just want to give you glory and honor this morning, God. Receive our worship, my God. For you are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, my God. You are worthy, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. You're so worthy, my Lord. You're so worthy, my Lord. Father God, for your presence. You're so worthy, Lord. Receive our worship. So for you. Receive our worship. Oh God. Hear our hearts, Lord. Just make it personal this morning. Oh, we love you, Abba. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. Oh, we love you, Lord. Receive it, Jesus. Spirit of 
just want to see you, Father God.
Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're. Can we repeat that chorus? I know that your eyes are like a flame of fire. And I know that your hair is as white as wool. And I know that your voice sounds like water. Jesus, you're beautiful. Cause I know that your eyes are like a flame of fire. And I know that your hair is as white as wool. And I know that your voice sounds like water. Jesus, you're Oh, just imagine him. Cause I know that your eyes are like a flame of fire. And I know that your hair is as white as wool. And I know that your voice sounds like water. Jesus, you're beautiful. Declare him. Cause I know that your eyes are like a flame of fire. And I know that your hair is as white as wool. And I know that your voice sounds like water. Jesus, you're that your eyes are like a flame of fire I know that your hair is
up his name this morning. Come on. Yes, you. Come on. 
tore the veil, my God. You're the one that gave us access to your throne, my God. So we declare your holiness this morning. We lift up a bride of our suit that of our kingdom. We lift up a shout of praise, my God, to the one who is holy, to the one who is worthy, to the one who deserves all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. Oh, Jesus, you are holy. You are holy, my God. You are holy, my God. Join with the angels, my God, for you are holy, Jesus. Cause holy, oh, 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 holy, oh, 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 holy. Come on, holy, oh, 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 holy, Lord God Almighty. Oh, you're holy, God. Oh, oh, oh you're holy, God. Oh, 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 Let him hear it. God, oh, holy, oh, holy, oh, holy, Lord God Almighty, oh, holy, oh, holy, oh, holy, Lord God Almighty, oh, yes, you're holy, Lord.
on, don't stop your praise this morning. Come on, don't stop your praise this morning. He's the only one who is holy. He's the only one who is worthy. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, you're holy, Jesus, Jesus. you guys to know that this week I read that if you worship like a child you will shut the mouth of the enemy and you will silence your oppressors and you guys know that children don't care what they look like when they sing and when they dance and they when they love something they don't care so I just challenge you I challenge you today that you worship your king like if you were a child so you will silence the mouth of the enemy who has been thinking that he can roar into your life. I declare that a childlike worship will just spread across this country, this United States, Come this on. world, this place right here in Transformation Church. Amen? Come on. So I just want you to lift up a praise yeah. like a child. Right now, this place, you're worthy, Jesus. Oh. You're worthy, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Father, thank you for the Lamb. Thank you for Jesus. Can somebody shout, thank you for the Lamb? Yeah, the Lamb paid it all. The Lamb is worthy. The Lamb is worthy this morning and forever and for eternity. Oh, you worthy, Lord. Oh, you worthy, Jesus. Oh, you worthy, Jesus. And when John saw the scroll and he looked around him, he found no one worthy of opening it. But then he saw someone that looked like a slain lamb. And he says, this one, 
This one is the only one worthy to open the scroll. He's the only one worthy. He's the only one worthy. Not me, not you, not us, not I. Him, him, him. Only him will we worship for eternity. It will have no end. He's worthy for eternity. As you give your life for us, Lord, we give our life to you. And we offer it even now as a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing unto you, Lord. And that is our spiritual worship service. That we would offer our lives to him. So, Father, we pray that this morning there would be just a, a spirit of surrender in this room. We would not be looking for preference, but we would be after surrender. That there would be a spirit of surrender in this room, God. A spirit of surrender. It says, all in. I'm all in. I'm surrendering, Lord. I won't run anymore. For some people here this morning, the Lord will say, stop running. Your feet are tired. Your mind is troubled. Your life and your heart's in chaos. The Lord says, do not run any longer. Surrender, Lord. So tonight, or the, rather this morning, we, we surrender to you. We surrender to your will. We surrender to your call. And we declare that you are holy. You are worthy. So we give you all praise and all worship and all honor and glory in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Before you have a seat, as everyone's getting ready to have a seat, right, um, let's just pray over, over the finances this morning. Um, just want to let you know again that, that there are multiple ways that, that, that you're able to give. Amen. Um, one of our most popular ways um, is either, obviously, cash or check. Um, and if you have cash or check on your way out, we're going to have ushers um, at the exit doors, and you're able to give uh, in the basket on your way out if you're giving cash or check. Amen. If you need an envelope, they have envelopes as well in the back. So if you need an envelope, just raise your hand. They can go to you, and that way you can get your, your offering, your tithe ready. Um, and if not, we also have Cash App. Not sure if we can project it on the screen. But we have Cash App that you're able to give your tithes, your offering, or any type of special uh, offering that you would like to give. You can give through our church's Cash App. Um, and, and then you're also able to give through an app called Tithely, which is very easy as well. Just putting in your information and searching Transformation Church in Bridgeton, New Jersey. And you're able to give there. And we have a, a, um, a drop-down menu. It gives you different options, tithes, offering, building fund, missions fund. Um, and so we just want to thank everyone for continuing to give, for continuing for us to be obedient to God. Because the tithe doesn't belong to us. It belongs to him. And so we're not just bringing it. For some of us, we're returning it. Amen? And so an offering is what the Lord would put in your heart this morning. Amen? Um, and so let's just pray. Can we lift our hands? I believe that in the midst of hardship, in the midst of financial struggle, there is a God who becomes our sole provider. And he says, won't you depend on me? Don't, don't, don't depend on your paycheck. Do not depend on the government. Depend on me. The kingdom has, has unlimited resources. As a matter of fact, I am the owner of the gold and silver, the Lord says. So Father, we just pray in Jesus' name that you would continue, Lord, as, as the word would say, that you would continue to bless the cheerful giver this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord, for every family member, every family represented here this morning that is struggling financially, Lord. Some that are, that, are, that are finding it difficult to make ends meet. Some that are living paycheck to paycheck. Some that are unemployed. And we pray that this morning, Lord, that you would just overflow. That the floodgates of heaven would be poured out as your people, as your children move in obedience, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you give seed to the sower, but you give bread, Lord, to those who are hungry, Lord. Those who want to eat, you give bread, but those who want a future, you give a seed. So I thank you right now in this hour that you're giving seed to the sower, God. I thank you, Lord, because in this house, Lord, there is fertile ground. 
to advance the kingdom, to move forward in the name of Jesus. And so we pray, Lord, that we would tap in, we would walk into the inheritance that was bought for us by the blood of the Lamb. We never have seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. And I thank you, Lord, for the multi-generational blessing that's being released over this house and the spirit of wisdom to steward all that you've given us. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, if you believe it, shout amen. 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 Hey, before you have a seat, won't you just fist bump somebody next to you and tell them, welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on, tell somebody this morning, you look good this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we give a hand clap to the Holy Spirit? Honor his presence. Amen. We want to welcome all our friends, our families. Amen. This morning to the house of the Lord. Amen. It's not just the house of the Lord. I like to say we're in the river of God. God's constantly moving. God's constantly flowing. Amen. Um, why are people in in, 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 um, in constant transition because God's always changing. God's always doing things. God does not change, right? He's the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. But God provokes us to move. He, he, he really mobilizes the church that we may move forward and advance. We're never going to find in Scripture where God says, um, stay small. Don't grow. Don't believe. No, we're going to find a father who believes so much in his children that he would encourage us to move forward, to grow, to advance, to get to, to get to destiny, to grow from faith to faith. And so for everyone here this morning, we're all in a different season and going through a different transition, but God's the same. And so we just give glory to God for that. Amen. So we want to thank everyone for coming out this morning. Those who are breaking out. Um, and just believe in God. Um, those are who are watching online, can we give a hand clap and a shout? Come on to our online audience. Yeah. I want to welcome all those who are watching us via Facebook Live. Amen. How many ready for the word this morning? Amen. Now, how many were blessed last week by the ministry of Jim? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Praise God. Amen. It was, it was amazing, and I think he really... He really shifts things, shifts people, shifts ministries. Amen. And at, um, last Sunday night, we were at, he was closing out an event, and it was just amazing, just um, how the Lord uses him. And he really has his own unique way of, uh, of flowing. Amen. You have to be you, and you have to be okay being yourself, even if that means that people don't like you. Right? Amen. It's called identity. Amen. Um. You're being authentic. So really quick, before we get into the scripture this morning, I have a couple announcements. Um, number one, uh, we have been uh, having corporate prayer on Wednesdays, which was, which was a little out of the ordinary because we were used to having just midweek Bible study. But we've been praying for about a month and a half, uh, actually almost two months. We've been praying here on Wednesday nights, and it's been amazing. It's been powerful, and um, we've been getting people to come out. We know for people to come out to prayer, um, that's just a blessing. Come on. Amen. So it's been amazing. We've been really breaking ground in the spirit realm. Um, and then, so now we're going to shift a little bit. And what we're going to do on Wednesdays is um, at, at 630, hear me out. We're going to be announcing it through our, through our church page. But starting at 630, um, we're going to be meeting on Wednesday. So we're going to be praying, having corporate prayer from 630 to 7. Then at 7, we're going to have some corporate worship. And then I'm going to be teaching. Or whoever's going to be teaching on Wednesdays with us. Uh, but we're going to have, we're going to go back to some midweek teaching. 
I mean, I really heard the Lord say, um, uh, it, it's time to go back to teaching on midweek. So I just want to hear the Lord and be obedient to his word. So on Wednesdays, do not miss it. We're having corporate prayer at what time? 6.30. And then we'll go into corporate worship at around 7. And then we'll teach, amen, the word of God. So bring your Bibles, your notebooks, and, and a willing heart and a willing spirit. Amen. Um, also, something very important. We are still in the works of figuring out how we're going to relaunch our kids' program, our kids' church on Sundays. But until we figure that out, I want to announce that Wednesdays we will be kicking off kids' church again. Amen. Um, and, so, and so that means parents that feel like they can't really come and focus, um, I want you to know that we are going to have uh, PC Kids' Church again. Um, obviously, age, ages four and up, I believe, right? A ages four and up. And so parents, feel free to come on out. Um, also want to announce that the nursery, there's some uh, um, renovations that have to be done um, to it. So the nursery will not be open right now. But if you have a child that, that you need to attend, need to feed, or do any, any of the above, um, you can see one of our ushers in the back, and they will um, take you to a room, and they can help you out. Amen, church? Um, so around the same lines of kids' ministry, at our Connect table where you check in in the morning, there is a sign-up sheet um, for those who would like to volunteer for the kids' ministry. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, I signed up already. But COVID has reset a lot of things. So we want to make sure that these same people are still on board. Amen? It's been about six and a half months since, since we did our last Sunday Kids Church. So if you're interested um, and, or have some, some type of passion or interest in helping to serve in our kids' ministry, you can sign up at our, at our Connect table um, in, the, in, the, in the foyer. Um, also, um, our Wednesday series, our Wednesday teaching series is is going to be entitled All In. And we're going to be talking about the power of honor, the power of submission, our authority that God has given us um, to say yes to him. That's the most powerful decision you can make is say, yes, Lord, I surrender. So it's, it's going to be called All In. And next Sunday, church, next Sunday, you don't want to miss it, we're going to be starting a brand new sermon series entitled Roots of Resilience. So we're going to be talking about the resilient church. And I believe that if there is ever a time to identify resiliency in the church, it is now. Amen. So next week we start that series. Um, also, as, as, as led by the Lord, um, just through my time of uh, personal devotion, um, we're going to be every Sunday in November, every Sunday in November, we're going to be opening our church doors at 6 a.m. for some corporate fasting and corporate praying. Amen. So... If you feel like that's for you, come on now. It's an open invite. I pray that everyone would just take a hold of that. Um, so we're going to be meeting every Sunday at 6 a.m. for corporate prayer, corporate fasting. Um, every Sunday in November, and then we'll go from there. Amen, church? I said about two weeks ago that we have to be identified once again as a praying church. And I don't mean just PC here in Virginia. I mean the, the body of Christ needs to be identified once again through prayer that would ultimately get us identified by presence. Amen? So that's every Sunday in November at 6 a.m. Also, once again, if you're interested, we put it on, on our church page, but if you're interested in joining our media crew, cameras, um, the pro presenter, just everything that has to do with media, uh, we're going to have a, a special interest meeting next Sunday, October 25th at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So if you're interested, come on out and hear what it entangles. Amen. Um, one more to all of our men, all the men in this house. Come on. Yeah. It's a few men, but it's, it's cool. Um, all we need is a few good men, right? Um, to our men, um, we were supposed to have our, our, our men's retreat, um, I think it was in March or February. And so we have tried to reschedule it. Um, but it's just, it hasn't been looking good. So we finally have our set date for our rescheduled winter men's retreat. It would be February 19th to the 21st, obviously 2021 next year. Um, and so if you already paid your camp, then you are set to go. If you pay your deposit, you're set to go. Now you've got to finish paying the rest. And we're also going to be um, announcing some, some payment arrangements so you're able to pay 
um, as you go and not have to pay it in one shot. The cost is $130 and then includes lodging, food, conferences, um, and different things that we're going to be doing. And it, all, it will also include a t-shirt. Amen? If you've never been camping, it's not, we're not going to be in tents. It's like dorm style. It's like high class camping. Don't worry about us trying to turn the fire on, trying to stay warm. It's none of that. Okay? Amen. Okay. All right. Um, for, for more info, you can see myself or you can see Leo for more info of the, um, concerning the men's retreat in February. Awesome. Amen. So those are the announcements. How many are ready for God's word? Yeah. Amen. You're like, yeah, Pastor, hurry up. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Job chapter 1. Job 1. Job 1. Now, about three weeks ago, I preached a sermon called The Hedge. How many remember that? And so um, it has turned into like a mini-series. That wasn't my intention, but it's okay. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you week or part three, and it's the last week of The Hedge. You can stay seated as we are still in the same chapter, chapter one of the book of Job. And what I want you to do, I want you to go and jump down to verse 20. The hedge. How many have been blessed by this word? Amen. Um, I really think it came um, in, a, in a perfect time. Um, so, all right. Job 1. Verse 20. If you're there, shout amen. Verse 20 of Job chapter 1 says, Then Job arose. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, now Job said this, he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Now I need you to understand that everything that is happening unto this point in the life of Job, Job is not blaming the devil. Oh, we getting started early this morning. He's not blaming the devil. He's not blaming his own sin, his bad decision making, what he sowed, he's reaping. He says, the Lord gave and the Lord took away. And then he continues to after that statement, he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, verse 22 is so key, not just to this story, but to our story, church. And verse 22 says, in all this, Job did not sin. Somebody shout, did not. Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Now, in context, what he's saying, he did not curse God. He did not curse God, although everything that was stripped from him was making everyone seem to them that Job was no longer blessed. And Job did not sin. Job did not hold God accountable. Job did not curse God. But Job blessed the Lord. Job blessed the Lord. And so what I want to do this morning is I want to finish giving you these last points of reference that we've been talking about, and we've only been able to give one point, and that is the hedge of consecration. And we already talked about that, the importance of it is for us as, as, as people of God, children of God, not just to build altars, but to guard our prayer life. How many remember that, right? Now, how many have been praying more? <laughs> all right. We're just going to forget that question, right? Um, all right. So number one was guard, guard, guard your consecration, okay? Guard your consecration. We need to guard our altars. As we build altars, we need to guard our altars. And that, and that really keeps us in the place that I call hedged. God gives the hedge. We guard the hedge. Amen? Because we have what we've all known as free Will, which means that none of this that's in God's word will ever be automatic in your life. You don't, just, you don't just have to believe it, you have to receive it. And so God hedges 
put the hedge around us, and we have to guard that hedge. So we said point number one, the hedge of consecration. We all need a hedge of consecration. We all need to guard our altars. And it's not enough for me just to say I'm building my spiritual life. We need to build generational altars, church. And we said two weeks ago that it's important and it is vital to our growth in God that our families are also rooted in prayer. And, and we have this selfish way of thinking that says, well, I'm going higher and I'm going deeper even if you don't want to go. So God would, would just exhort us to encourage those who he's given us access to, those who are part of our family, those who we are in relationship to, to encourage them to go deeper with us. So when you go into your prayer closet, you're not giving your children cartoons or a phone or a device and say, leave me alone while I pray. But you can pray with them. They can pray with you. So as you see Jesus rightly, they can see Jesus rightly. Right? Amen? The Bible says, and God showed his face to Moses, and Moses showed it to Israel. It wasn't enough for the leader to have it. He needed the body to get it. Because whatever is on the head has to flow down to the body. Amen. And so we're not just building these, these personal altars. We're understanding the, the power of building more, uh, generationally. It's called legacy. Because the greatest form of leadership will always be legacy. If you don't have no one to pass it down to, you weren't effective. Because if it dies with you, I'm going to tell you something right now. You're probably going to hate me. If it dies with you, it's not biblical. Because when I read scripture, even Jesus left legacy to his apostles. Go, Matthew 28, 18. Go therefore, because I've been given all authority, all power, and now I give it to you. So my question is, what are people going to remember you by when you're no longer here? Because two things are true. You'll either be raptured. Or you'll die. My prayer is, Lord, I don't want to die. You got people that say, man, I can't wait to die to see Jesus. Well, I don't want to see him that way. I want to be raptured. Come on, somebody in this room. Right? <laughs> but we're all going to pass from this earth, this temporal realm. And how are people going to remember you by? What are people going to say about you? Well, with Job, the report was he was a man of integrity. In such a way... That as, actually, if you study chronologically the order of the Bible, they would say that Job was the first book written, right? So even now, 2020, we're talking about Job. Look how powerful and impactful this man was. He was a man of integrity. He was upright. He was righteous. He feared a God. He turned away from evil. When people look at your life, what's, how is their report concerning you going to sound like? Which leads me to point number two. You ready? Write this down. Point number two, the hedge, the hedge of perspective. The hedge of perspective. Now, if you're not a big note taker, I, I, I just exhort you and I encourage you to become one for God's word. Amen. Uh, number two, the hedge of perspective. Now, we said number one was the hedge of consecration. We needed to guard our prayer life, right? Now, point number two, the hedge of perspective, the Lord will tell you, guard your eyes. And this is a big one. This, this is a very deep one. Guard your eyes. Everything happening around you is a direct result of what has already taken place within you. Whether good or bad, whatever you're seeing in your surroundings, whatever you're seeing around you is a direct result of what's already taken place within you. And God tells Satan in verse 9 and 10, have you not considered my servant Job? What, what was in Job was about to be tested. Such a way that Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, says there was a time for everything under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. What you're going through is not new. It's a byproduct and a result of what God's already placed in you. <sighs> Hallelujah. It's a direct result of, what, of what's in you. And we live in a time where so many people are walking around with a fractured perception. 
the society, the culture that we live in, and the culture that we are tolerating, not just in the world, but within the ecclesia, within the church, it, it, it is a culture that has a fractured perception. The reason I am so prone to offense is because my perception has been fractured. Because things are not always the way they seem or the way they look like, church. Hallelujah. Do you know that what happened in the garden with Adam, it was not, not just that Adam sinned. The first man, the first man, him and, a, him and Eve, it was not that they just sinned. But his perception of who the father was and who he called them to be was fractured at that moment. Because that's what sin does, church. Sin fractures our perception. And now we are looking at God through a fractured lens. It's the design that the Father has given us versus the world's system. Heaven's design versus the world's system. The hedge of perspective. Guard your eyes. And I really heard the Holy Spirit tell me he is coming this morning to heal fractured perception. Because the mind and the eyes are all connected in one. I never see things as they are. I always see things as I think they are. Because so a man thinketh, so he is. There's a reality, and there's your opinion. There's a reality, and there's what you see. Elijah said, Lord, can you open the eyes of the servants so they can see? You understand that God is, is coming to heal our fractured perception, not just of who he is, but of who we are. So that I can, by the power vested in me, by the authority given to me, won by Jesus Christ on that cross, now I can walk in who God has called me to be and not who I think fits me best. Fractured Perception. God is coming this morning to heal our fractured perception. Job is not a man who is suffering because he did anything wrong. Job was a man of suffering because he did everything right. Why do good, bad things happen to good people, right? <laughs> There's something about the righteous suffering that the righteous, when they suffer, they suffer well. And so, and so all over America, we are, we are selling people, not in this house, but <laughs> we're selling people this cheap gospel that says, come to Jesus and everything's going to be made new, which is true. And you're going to have no more problems. You're never going to be sick ever again. Mm -hmm. And we completely miss the verse that Jesus says, there was a cost to follow me. That if you really want to be called my disciple, and that's what he's saying, if you really want to be mine, you have to be willing to carry your cross. Personal. 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 You, you can have a prayer buddy. You, we, can, we can do corporate prayer, corporate fasting, corporate Bible, but it's personal. So when it leaves, when you leave this place, it doesn't stay here. It's personal. It's individual. And the righteous will suffer for his name's sake. Hallelujah. The church in America does not know what true persecution looks like. We do not know what persecution looks like. Do not, I want you to hear this church, do not take it personal. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you're going through this morning. I, I really don't. But I know that whatever you're going through, the Lord says do not take it personal. Don't take, it's part of righteous living. <laughs> and so Matthew 6.33 will let us know, seek first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness. 
we miss that. We, we, we do away because we want the blessing without doing things that's right. Say, but seek first thy kingdom in all of its righteousness. And then everything else will be added unto thee. There is, there is righteousness for us. Like We have to get this right. We have to get church right. We have to get the gospel right. We have to get our relationships back in order. Do not take it personal. And here's the question. How righteous can you live? That God recommends you for a spiritual attack. Huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask that again. How righteous can you live here in this world, in this cosmos, that God actually looks at you, looks at Satan and says, do what you want. Because I trust him so much, I know he will not curse me. Mm -hmm. How righteous, how much of a man of faith and a woman of faith can you really be? That God would consider you for a spiritual attack. And I hear the Lord says, do not take it personal. You are experiencing the fruit of living right. <laughs> and it's not always the blessing that you would perceive it to be or package in a way that you want it to be. But the greatest blessing is that the Father can look from heaven and say, I trust you. That's the greatest blessing. The greatest blessing is not that I get a new house, the car that I want, the man and woman that you want. The greatest blessing is that the Father can open the heavens and say, this is my beloved son, ho, ho, and whom I am well pleased. And the Holy Ghost can descend like a form of a dove and rest on me. That's the greatest blessing, church, that the Father is approving you. Because if hell doesn't know your name, you're not doing it right. Yeah. I know my name is written in heaven, but I also know hell knows who I am. And when all hell rises up against you, I want you to know it's not that you're in sin. It's not generational curses. It's that you're doing something right. Yeah, yeah, you've been praying through it, you've been breaking ground, you've been in heavy end. Come on, can I get somebody in this house? You've been in deep intercession, and God says, I'm about to consider you. You're about to be considered. And, and, and I said two weeks ago that that word consider is actually, actually a military term. I've trained you enough to release you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so everything you've learned is about to be put in practice. Everything you've learned, everything, you, everything I've taught you in the secret place, everything I've taught you in the secret Bible school can't teach you this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Seminary cannot teach you this. Reading a book, one, only suffering can teach you this. Yeah. No wonder the psalmist David said, in my brokenness, I saw God. No wonder David said that, 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 that his tears were his food. Day and night, he ate his tears. He suffered, but he saw God in a way he's never seen him. And I'm telling you, if you really want to experience who the Father is, go through some stuff. And while you go through some stuff, don't lose yourself. Uh -huh. And God brought you this morning to let you know it's not your fault and don't take it personal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And after this one, the, the devil is going to know that you won't curse God. And after this one, the devil won't know, will know he can no longer be welcome in your house. And after this, I feel like the Lord is saying, up, after this moment, it's about to happen in your life. After he heals you, after he raises you up, after he transitions you. I'll shout your name throughout all the earth. Mm -hmm. After this. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. The old school preacher used to say, God's going to give you double for your trouble. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I'm 31 years old, but I got ancient oil on the inside. Don't worry. Okay. So. 
Double for your trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when we look at the life of Job, it wasn't double. It was ten times. <laughs> Come on. Ten times what he lost. Yeah, ten times, ten times. I don't, I don't know who that's for, but that's for you. And so there are many things that you have been brought to. Hear this out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you the definition of a miracle. There are many things that you have been brought to that others have died in. There are things that you've gone through and you've made it out of where other people have died in them. You've graduated through them. It's a miracle. Because sometimes we want this miracle to be something physical where we can actually have it and, 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 and just touch it and it be tangible. But sometimes the greatest miracle is that you didn't lose your mind while you went through it. Sometimes the greatest miracle is that you didn't get that divorce when you were going through it. Sometimes the greatest miracle is that you didn't beat your child when they rebelled against you and lost your mind and went to jail for child abuse. Come on, can I be real this morning? Because we've all been through stuff where we could have done stuff, should have done stuff, would have done stuff, should have, would have, could have. And God, God's grace just grappled you. And you are living today in the land where other people have died. God's graduated you. I said in the beginning of this year that this was going to be a year of boldness, a year of upgrades, a year of a new sound. Well, <laughs> welcome to 2020, <laughs> where if you ain't bold, you ain't making it. Where if you ain't got no faith, you ain't making it. <laughs> they said only, only about 65% of the church is coming back to church. Welcome to 2020. The dawn of a new day where God has separated the men from the boys. He's separating the men from the boys. He's separating those who have been playing church versus those who are the church. And if, you, I'm telling you, if you're here this morning, there's something on the inside of you that says deep is calling unto deep. You ain't here just to say, I want to be marked as, as president for church attendance. You're not here for church attendance. You're here because you're part of the remnant. Yeah. I, I, I believe if you're here in the midst of, uh, of this outbreak and you're here, you're part of God's remnant. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's not about what's before you. Hear me. It's not about what's happening around you. It's about what's happening within you. It's about how you're seeing your situation. I want to tell you this morning that the Lord told me that this is a season to guard our perspective. How you see, write this down really quick. I want, I, I want to give it to you the way I wrote it. How you see a thing determines the weight of it. Bad news to you might not be bad news to you. You can ask some, some of my spiritual sons and daughters here, and, 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 and you know, Pastor, I got bad news. I said, no, it's not. No news can be bad. And I always, I always said that jokingly, but now it's become my motto in life. Pastor, I got bad news. No, you know, he just got new news. Now, how you see it determines the weight of it. How you see a thing determines the weight of that thing. There can be 50 people right now in this room, right? And we're all receiving this word differently. It's a matter of perspective. For some people, they're like, man, it, this is just God's word. It's okay. I, I don't need it. For other people, they are, they are, they are taking this word and, and making it their own. Because how you see your thing determines the weight of this thing. Your perspective is so key to the next thing that God's going to do. Mm -hmm. Your perspective is key to the next thing that God is about to release over your life. So in this season, the Lord would say, guard your perspective, guard your eyes. It's never, hear me out, it's never a situation issue. It's always a perspective issue. 
Come on. Five people lose their home. You got five different perspectives. Now, to the natural eyes, to the world system, you're like, that is, that is a tragedy. And rightly so. You don't know where you're going to go. You've lost your home. It's foreclosed. But between those five people, you got someone <laughs> that has a different spirit. Because you always need somebody that can see things that no one else sees. And you make sure, you hear this out, you make sure that the next person that walks in your life that you can call friend, make sure that they can see things beyond the way you can see them. Because if the people around you don't make you better, let them go. I love you, but see ya. I love you, but you ain't welcome. I can't. Come on now. Mm -hmm. I decided in my life to get around people that not just make me better, but that I deem perhaps to have greater gifts than me. And guess what? That doesn't bother me because we ain't in competition. You're, you're, we're not, I'm not called to compete with you because as long as I'm competing, I'm not completing. Get around people who are wise, people who have been through stuff. That's why Jesus got the woman who was, who, who had, the, the Bible would say she was filled of sin. And she broke the alabaster box oil, right? The spikenard perfume on the feet of Jesus and everyone was offended. He said, no, no, you don't know what she's been through. And Jesus said something so, so important about this lady. He said, and she, her story will be told for eternity. Hello, 2020, we're still talking about this woman. Never underestimate your suffering. Mm -mm -mm. Never underestimate your brokenness because God is setting you up for generations to come. So when they look back, hello, Job, I look back at Job and I said, man, there's hope for me. <laughs> your brokenness going to be the platform of restoration for people. Fix your eyes on him. Fix your eyes. Point number three. I'm going quickly here. Point number three. The hedge of worship. Point number three. The hedge of worship. The hedge of worship. Now we said number one was the hedge of consecration. It was guard your altar. Guard your prayer life. Number two, the hedge of perspective. Guard your eyes, right? You ready for this? Point, on, point number three, the hedge of worship. Guard your tongue. Guard your tongue. Verse 9 and 10. Job, Job chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Hear this out. It says, verse 9 and 10 of Job 1. It says, then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear you for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him in his house and all that he has on every side? He says, you have blessed. See, even the devil knows that he was blessed. Sometimes the devil knows who you are more than you know who you are. <laughs> You're crying, having your own little pity party, and the devil says, man, if you knew what I knew about you. He says, have you not blessed him? Come on now. Have you not blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land? Guard your tongue. Hear this out. Satan was telling God, God, I need you to know this. Job worships you because of. And God was telling Satan, no, Job was about to show you that he worships me in spite of. I'm going to say it again. Satan was telling God, the, Job worships you because of. And God said, no, I'm about to demonstrate to you that Job worships me in spite of. Why do I love you? Because if you were to ask anybody in your life, the majority of people would say, would start their statement like this, I love you because. Because for, for most people, for most human beings, if there is not a because of, I can't love you. Because our love is based on terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Stop calling them. See if they'll still feel love. Stop texting. Come on now. And so, I love you because of. Job worshiped God in spite of. And Satan was trying to reduce Job to worship God because of. 
And here's what I want to let you know. God's not just here to restore your altar. He's not just here to restore your perception. He's here to get your noise and your sound back. Uh, I want to prophesy to someone this morning that the devil has taken your sound. Hell has risen up against your house and he has muzzled and he has muted your mouth. But this morning I hear the Lord say the muzzle is coming off. He's, he's going to unmute your voice. Hallelujah. So my question to you this morning, do you serve God? Is your life surrendered to God because of or in spite of? Is your relationship with the Father based on what he gives you and what he does for you? Or is it on the basis of who he is? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It doesn't say taste and see what he's giving you, what he said about you is blessed. He said taste and see that he is good. And that his mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. I'm tasting of his goodness. Tasting of his goodness. If hell didn't exist, would you love him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he didn't pay your bills, would you love him? Come on, Lord. You know I need some finance. If you never got another bill paid, if you never ever got another promotion, which will not happen because you live in the blessed place. But if that did not happen, would you still say, Lord, you are king. You are G You're worthy. I worship you. I surrender it all to you. Or is it based on what he can do for you? Well, Pastor, how do you determine that easy? When you get your breakthrough, do you forget about him? When God gets done doing what he promised you, do you forget about him? Hear this out. Job 13, 15. Job told God, Though you slay me, yet will I. <laughs> and someone has to make that their lifelong motto. Though you slay me. You know what that word slay means? Death. Kill me. Get my head and chop it off. Behead me. Although, although you do what you want with me, through me, in me, yet I will bless the Lord. Though you slay. So can we say that today? I, I, I don't know. And when I, when I was preparing this, I said, Lord, am I willing to say, though you slay me? I said, well, if you can't say that, you have no part in me. Though you slay me, yet I, yet I. Here's what I want you to know. Things, and if you want to write this down, write it down. Things do not make you. For some people here who are basing their relationship with God based on what they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and please do me a favor. Do not measure your life on other people, on what they got. Because what they got is bills and debts. Come on. What they got is bills and debts. <laughs> Come on now. Credit cards that are maxed out. But they're living the, no, no. The blessed life is not getting bills and getting more debt. The blessed life is knowing who I am. Yeah. Find me a homeless person that knows who they are. I, I spoke with a homeless person one time, and he said, I'm here because I want to be. I said, what do you mean? He says, I'm here because I felt the Lord says, I need you to be on the street corner and live by faith. He says, I, I, I had an amazing corporate job. I had family. I can go to wherever I want to go. He says, and my wife approves of this. I said, okay, cool. He goes home every night. He's out there all day looking like a homeless what it means to walk in the kingdom. And so there's this prosperity gospel that says, get it while you can, or, or get rich or die trying. I wish I had time to unpack that. <laughs> and we've completely ignored living the life of faith. If you make six figures, you don't need faith. You don't need financial breakthrough. If you can do it by yourself, why are you praying for financial breakthrough? And, 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 so, and so the blessed life is not in the stuff I got, it's in who I am. Because the very day that I get stripped from stuff, I get stripped from me. And so many, here, you know why we have so many insecure people in church? Because they have the security on what they have. And, and the day, the day 
the day that they start stripping you, come on, take this away from me, Christina. They strip stuff from you. They're lost. Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? How am I going to pray now? How am I going to pray? How am I going to worship? What am I going to do? What am I going to wear? What am I? And you strip their stuff that they put their security life in. I'm secure in that. And they miss the opportunity to be all that God has created them to be in spite of what they got. And so, and so Job was letting all of hell know, get what you want from me. It doesn't change who I am. And the world needs people who can live this life. Uh-huh. That can live this life. Stop waiting for a second stimulus check. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, hear me out. Because it literally does that. It stimulates them. But when you know who you are. When you know who you are. Am I speaking to somebody who knows who they are? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. The greatest form of, 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 of commonwealth, or what we call welfare, is the kingdom. The commonwealth of the people. My identity is not tied to my stuff. I know the Father, and the Father knows me. <laughs> that he knows my name, and I know who he is. I don't approach him as God or as king. I say, Daddy. You're Abba. You've been given to you, you. You've given me not just the opportunity, but the right. For all those, John chapter 1, verse, four, four, verse 14. For all those who received him, he gave them the right to be called sons of God. I've been given this right to call him daddy, to call him father. And he knows all of my needs before I even mention one to him. Hmm? Are you rooted in things or are you rooted? Christ. So my question this morning is, what has taken your worship? What has taken your Sabbath? What has choked the life of worship out from you? Mm -hmm. The Lord, he's going to restore your sound. He's going to give, some people here this morning, he's going to give you back your joy noise. He's going to give you back your noise of joy, your joy noise. You remember when, when, when God parted the Red Sea and not just Moses but the children of Israel passed and, and they were dry. And then when they passed, the sea closed and swallowed up the Egyptians and the chariots and everything, right? The Bible says that Moses' sister sang a song of deliverance and of victory. Well, I'm not on the worship team. Yeah, well, you're on God's worship team. Well, they don't give me an opportunity. You have an opportunity every week. Well, they don't let me preach. You can preach every day if you want to. But we're obsessed with platforms. Song of the, the song of victory, she sang that thing out. It came from within. It wasn't copy pasted. It was out of her own suffering, out of her own revelation of who he was. No wonder Job said, I've always heard about you, but now my eyes see you. And now I see. I like to hear it, like the Lord is saying prophetically to some people, can you see me? Do I have your attention? Do you see me now? Mm -hmm. Do you see me now? Who I am is not rooted in what I have, nor is it based on what I, I perceive to be a blessing. 
because the greatest blessing is a person who knows who they are. That's my greatest wealth. My greatest wealth is not just health. That, that for me, that's number one. Number two is identity. Identity. Guard your tongue. Hear this out. Verse 20. Verse 20. Job chapter 1, verse 20. It says, then Job arose. And I'm getting ready to close if the team wants to join me. Then Job arose. Hear this out. And tore his robes and shaved his head. You know what this did? This was always in ancient biblical times. It was always a sign of mourning. Sackcloth, right? The ashes. I'm shaving my head. He says, because naked I came from, from my mother's womb. Naked I will return. Okay? Now hear me, hear, hear, hear this out. You need to be able to be a hybrid Christian. That on one side you're mourning, on the other side you're worshiping. That, I, that as people reject you, you feel loved by the Father. Because you can't control what they do to you, but you can only control who you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's mourning. He shaves his head. He tears it. He's naked before God's presence. And, and, and was he mourning? Well, the Bible says before that, that a great wind came and shook the house and his children had just died. Now, now in the natural, you are mourning, you are crying, you are weeping. But weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. And I'm telling you, there, there is this hybrid anointing. Come on now. Well, you're mourning, but you're joyful. You're rejected, but you're loved. When it feels like you've lost it, it's like you're gaining everything because it's coming from within. Shh. Yeah. We can't just serve notice on the devil. You can't get my worship. Uh -huh. I know who I am. I know where I stand. I know what the Father meant. The Father is singing over me. When you ain't got no strength to sing, he's singing over you. Come on. He's dancing over you. He has angels that are charged to you. <laughs> the angel of the Lord encampeth around those who fear God and defend them. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 1.14, the angels have been charged to serve those who have received inheritance of salvation. I'm telling you, when you ain't got no strength, but you know who you are, angels are charged on your behalf. Paul says, be careful, because without knowing, you have just entertained angels. Because when you worship, not just do things around you shift, things within you shift. Worship is body language, right, Don? Worship is body language. You come here and you're upset because of what's going on in your life and you're just like this. Mm -hmm. I ain't worshiping. Well, who, well, whose fault is that? It's not God's. You're just letting the devil know you're right. I'm just tied to things. I'm tied to what I'm going. I'm tied to my gifting. I can't flow in that. Well, you're tied to a gift and you're insecure. And God wants to set you free to release you not on a platform to the world. And I'm preaching this thing from my own life. If no one gets it, I'm getting it. <laughs> and so in the wake of loss, Job embodies both grief and trust in the Lord. So my question this morning is, can you embody both? Can you embody hurt and praise, loss and worship, mourning and joy? Can we do that, church? Because on the natural side of me, Jesus says he's crying, John 11, over the death of Lazarus. After he gets done crying because the humanity of Jesus, the Christ in him stands up and says, be risen up. Lazarus, come forth. So you can do that. We're able. God says, I don't forget that you're human, so don't forget who I am. The Lord says, I, 
I see what you're going through, but don't forget who I've made you to be. Don't pity yourself and don't accept anything less than what I've, what I've told you you are. You are who I say you are. Even if you don't feel it. It's not being ignorant, ignorant of what's happening here. Wait, and wait, Pastor, I'm just human. I, I get it. So, so am I. But I've learned to see everything from a place of victory. So that when Jesus says it is finished, everything fits in that word. Now, aren't you glad that although John 19, 30, he says it is finished, he never says he was finished. Why isn't Jesus finished? Because we are the extension of who he was, the body. We have Christos, the anointing. Hear me out. Catch this. Jesus was done, but not Christ. That's why Paul doesn't call us the body of Jesus. He says the body of Christ. Jesus was done. He went back to the right hand of the Father. But Christ was about to be revealed through the world, through every nation, every tribe, every tongue, through who? Through us. How can we do that if we're so into us and to ourselves? And God wants to take us to a place where we don't just trust him, but where he can look down on earth and say, I trust you. This, this is the hour to be the church. And I've committed myself to this forever, that whether I'm a pastor or I'm a member of a church, I'm his son. I'm his son. Hear me. I'm his. You can take the mic from me if you want. You can say, but you'll never take who I am. I know who I am. I celebrate my hurt, the less healing I get. Two things happen when we worship him, not just here, but in our life, every day. We become like the one we're worshiping. And number two, we attract the things we're saying to him. I'm pulling him down. I'm pulling him down. Thank you for healing. I'm pulling healing. Thank you, Lord, for, for mending me. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling down his fullness. Thank you for making me whole. I'm pulling down his wholeness. I can embody both. I can do that. Job said, naked I came, naked I'll go. We don't know if Job was crying. His humanity probably was. 